Hey, everybody. Happy New Year in a beautiful 2020. Uh, I'll tell you what, there are a lot of things happening right now and a lot of people that are getting excited about this, uh, this upcoming year because I believe it is the year of sizzle. We've got a lot of things happening. I'm Aaron Rennert. I'm the Vice President over Worldwide Sales and Marketing. I'm the GM of the company, and I absolutely love every day what I do because I get to work with people just like yourselves. So I'm excited about the call tonight. I'm excited to bring people into the call because we've got a lot of different people, uh, a lot of thoughts and ideas. We're missing uh, one key ingredient tonight, and that is Milo Acosta, our Director of North American Sales. He's actually out uh, uh, enjoying a little bit of R&R &R while uh, he gets prepared to go out uh, on the road again. And if I know anything, we'll ask uh, maybe a little bit later. We've got Laura Bacini on the call, and I know that uh, I've always said to Milo, if you want to stay busy, just hook your wagon to uh, Laura. She's a workhorse and always out there. Maybe I shouldn't use that terminology, but the fact is that she's always out there uh, building and growing and, and doing everything she can. So we've got a lot of great things happening, folks, and I'm Certainly excited to talk a little bit about some of those things that we're doing on the corporate side, but also get a little bit of feedback from some of our great leadership out in the field and have them give us a little bit of insight in terms of what they're doing, the events that are coming up, the things that we've got planned, uh, and ways that we're going to kick off the new year. Of course, we talk about 2020. We are going to change the Connect call. Uh, that'll be happening here in the very, very near future, uh, meaning this, this coming month. But it will be the 2020 focus call, and we'll do the 2020 focus call throughout the year. Uh, as everybody knows, the first Monday of, uh, of the year, um, sorry, the first Monday of the month will be our, our first Monday of the month to do our 2020 focus call. And I'm excited about it because when we talk about focus, we've got Jason Goff, our global marketing director, on the call tonight. Uh, and Jason will take us through a little bit of the thoughts and ideas, but it really comes down to the overarching theme that we've got for this coming year. I'm excited about it because I believe that focus is something that we all have to have as far as the optics on our business, on our, the optics on our, our life, uh, the optics on our family, the optics on uh, our hobbies and the things that we do. And so that focus is granular. That focus is really down to uh, the deep, deep detail and the definitions of detail as we start to prepare for this coming year. And I'll tell you, uh, I've received so many great emails, so many great text messages, private messages, et cetera, from people who are excited about the year, who are excited about what they have uh, and what they look forward to accomplishing. I've received a lot of goals, uh, outlines of people's dreams, their vision, what they expect uh, in terms of the return that they're working hard towards as it comes on to this, uh, this coming year. So we're going to hit on a lot of salient points tonight, everybody. We're going to hit on some of those uh, thoughts and ideas as it relates to the business. We're going to talk a little bit about the events that are coming up, but we're also going to just give you a little bit of uh, credence as it relates to what you are planning on doing with, with your business this coming year and what you expect to see and achieve as you get closer. Now, I'm not going to go through all the, all the specifics on uh, the events that are coming up. I know I've got um, Pennsylvania. I've got two spots in Pennsylvania, of course, Lancaster County. Uh, on the 16th, and then I've got uh, Punxsutawney, which will be on the 17th and 18th of this, of this month, so just literally in a week and a half. And I am super enthused about it. I'll tell you why, because we've got a lot of people that have already grabbed on to some of the things that we're starting to work on and rolling out so that we can get people excited about the business, get people excited about going to events, get people excited about making commitments. And so we're going to discuss a lot of that tonight. We're going to talk about the Arrive with Five program and what that really means to each one of you because we have so many people that come to these events and we forget or they forget that uh, it's important to bring people with them. And so we'll talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk about each one reach one. What does that mean to you? What does it mean to the people that you're working with? And if we can think about it in the simplest of forms, what does it mean to just think about one person coming into your business this year? I mean, it may not seem like a lot, but for a lot of people, it is a lot. They're working. They're, they've got other things going on. Maybe they've never had success in this industry or this business before, but now they've got an opportunity. And so if we focus on helping each person find one person to bring into their business, it could be this month. It could be one person a month for the rest of the year. It could be one person every other month. It could be one person this year. But whatever your goal is, put it down on paper, and we're going to talk about that tonight as well. 
But the first person that I want to bring on the call tonight is Jason Goff. He is our global marketing director, as I mentioned. Jason has come to us with a lot of years in this industry, uh, just a, a, an enormous amount of background as it relates to the sales and marketing side of the business and really understanding the branding and really understanding the positioning and really understanding what it is that makes people tick and then how we can see things move forward as we really wrap our arms around the resources that are out there. And so I've actually been fortunate to work with Jason over the last number of months, about a year and a half now, as we've been able to, to get closer and really understand exactly how each other works, what, uh, what our strong uh, suits are, what our, maybe our, some of our weaknesses are. And then, of course, we uh, have become very good friends and, and uh, really enjoyed the opportunity to work together. But above and beyond that, we also have the chance to be professional and really see that there are statements that are made, thoughts and ideas that come out of uh, marketing. And I'm sure all of you can attest that there are so many great things that we're seeing out of our marketing department now. It's been just absolute leaps and bounds as we've seen uh, some of the things that have happened. We've got a lot of branding, a lot of content, uh, and, and much more creative uh, in, in terms of our promotions and those things that we're trying to put out there as far as video, et cetera. And so you guys can all thank Jason uh, with, a, with just a warm nod right, right here on the phone. We won't see you. But if you'll just give him a warm nod, we'll bring him on to the call. So, Jason, I want to welcome you to the call. Tell us what you see happening in 2020. Tell us about the thoughts, the ideas, the, the uh, intent that you have as it relates to your department and as it relates to Sizzle and as it relates to our uh, field development people as we start to see some of these great leaders really taking those next steps and taking us to the next level. So, uh, Jason Goff, welcome to the call. All right. Well, thanks very much, Aaron. I hope you can hear me okay. If uh, if you can't hear me, shoot me a text. And if you can hear me, just go ahead and uh, sit back and relax. Um, but I'm not relaxed. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for the warm introduction. And I, I would just say um, that I'm only as good as my team. And I've got a phenomenal team. You know, we've made – we've brought on some new people – um, some of you got a chance to meet Sophia last year at uh, Mauer Mountain and, and Ben Cook. Um, these uh, these uh, youngsters, as I like to think of them, have brought a lot of energy uh, to the team and have just made us better. And uh, we, we have also hired a, a new person by the name of Gabby, and she's helping us uh, with our different uh, social media aspects as well. But, um, yeah, like I said, I, I'm not relaxed. Uh, you know, we, we had a good holidays. A lot of us uh, actually were still working. Um, we did take time off to be with our families, but, um, you know, we were in the office um, planning, finishing off the year strong. Um, you know, very happy 2020 to everybody. We had a phenomenal 2019. I know that it was one of our best uh, sales record years, and uh, I don't want to steal anyone's thunder, but it seems like we did better. Uh, this year, I know we're still kind of rallying up uh, out of December, but that's a credit to everybody on the Sizzle team, especially to our field uh, leaders like yourselves. Um, you know, we, we kicked off wild momentum in 2019, and that was kind of our theme. And we definitely got into momentum, and that's a good thing because you don't want to slow down, obviously, you know, slide into a new year. You want to hit that really hard. And so with the momentum that we experienced in, in growth and in leadership, we had all-time highs in recruiting, you know, sales. Uh, we launched some phenomenal products that you guys just took and ran with. You know, CBD was a huge thing. Let's not forget H2 sticks. Um, really great products. And, of course, it wouldn't be sizzle without new products on the horizon. Uh, but really – like Aaron mentioned, our objective for 2020, a lot of companies are talking about vision, right? It's kind of an obvious thing, 2020 vision. Um, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but we wanted to make it about 2020 focus, right? And so often in the business, and even on the corporate side, sometimes we lose focus. What does it mean to lose focus? Sometimes you lose focus um, as to why you even got in the business, or sometimes we just we get into the weeds and we get into, uh, you know, maybe the operations side or the administrative aspects of the business. I'm speaking a little bit on the corporate side. And we kind of forget why, why we're doing this. And so sometimes you need to take a step back 
and, and adjust the goggles a little bit um, and, and get that focus where it needs to be. And we also know, uh, you know, I had a boss once tell me, he's like, you know, people used to really say, oh, you know, he's an amazing employee. He's the first to get there and he's the last to leave. And, you know, he puts in these 12-hour, 13-hour days. And, and, and I know um, that, that research has kind of shown that you can really only focus for a certain amount of time. And, and after that, it just you kind of lose focus and you're not super effective. So I know it's really critical to, to, to stay focused on what you're doing. So before I get too, too deep into that focus theme, I did want to just remind you of some events. Aaron, I know Aaron touched on those. Um, we've, we're, again, we're kicking off the new year strong. We want to stay in that momentum and stay focused. So Tom Maurer, Jr., is uh, doing a three-city Japan tour beginning on January 19th. Um, of course, we have Milo's Health and Happiness Tour. He'll be in Iowa on the 20th and the 21st of January, Wisconsin on the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, and Missouri on the uh, 25th. And then Aaron already mentioned uh, the, to- the dates that he'll be in, uh, in Pennsylvania. And then in February, we actually have uh, Aaron will be uh, going to Europe uh, toward the end of the month to do uh, an event there and really kind of help folks get focused there. And, uh, and then Tom Sr. and Thomas Maurer will be attending the Masters event in February. And, uh, you know, they might even launch a, a new product, but I'm uh, pretty sure that anytime Tom Sr. is involved, uh, you're going to get focused uh, beyond your wildest imaginations. So, um, you know, Aaron talked about this each one reach one concept. And um, I, I loved what he said. And, you know, I, I, would, I would just add to that, you know, what does it actually mean to, to reach someone? Uh, you know, specifically we're talking about bringing somebody into the business, okay? Well, that doesn't always mean that you're going to recruit somebody, but it may mean that you're going to bring in a retail customer right? How often do those retail customers end up, you know, getting a part, uh, be, being a part of the opportunity, right? It happens more often than you'd think. But retail customers are certainly not a bad thing. Um, so for me, I, I kind of, as I was thinking about this, you know, our business is fueled by reaching people with our products and our opportunities. But, you know, our lives are truly enriched by reaching beyond ourselves for others whose lives we can improve with health and prosperity, right? So in 2020, uh, we are we are challenging you and even ourselves a little bit to reach out to to reach out to people, excuse me, and provide time to train, to listen, um, to care, you know, to be a friend, right? Uh, you know, we make these great friendships in this industry, and that's just what you don't get uh, in, in 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 retail. Um, and you'd, you'd be surprised the one that you actually reach on your journey to su- success might actually be yourself. So you might be the one that you reach, right? And we know that we, um, that we become better people by getting outside of ourselves, right? So Aaron also talked about the, the Arrive with Five. So I liked, I liked what he said in a message that he sent me uh, today, and it said, you know, uh, the challenge is to bring five people to the next social meeting you attend, right? Um, if, if you got our, our January newsletter, uh, you know, we kind of talked about, you know, who are these five people, right? It's the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker, there's three. What about Bob? That's four. How about those uh, delivery folks? One of them would make a prime candidate. That's five. We're sure you can come up with many people. But, you know, let's make sure that, that when you're going to these meetings, you know, you're, you're bringing these people to come and taste, you know, take a bite of sizzle and see what it's all about because we really are a different company. We are doing things differently. And, uh, you know, we, obviously that's going to help your business tremendously if you, if you bring those people. And we are prepared, as in all things, to reward you for your efforts. So um, the other thing I want to talk about is, is the event that we have coming up in July. And um, we are calling it the Sizzle Focus 2020 event. So this will be an opportunity for us to all get focused. And, um, you know, we, we're going to, on the 16th, we're going to start with, with Mauer Mountain. Of course, this is an optional day, but I like to think of it in terms of, you know, Mauer Mountain is a great opportunity to, to literally get your head above the clouds, right? We're up there in the mountains. We're at a high elevation. Um, sometimes you need to, like I said, focus yourself, focus your business, 
remind yourself why you're doing this thing. And it's such a cool opportunity. Last year was my first Mara Mountain experience, and I just couldn't believe it. The whole day I'm just like, I can't believe we're doing this. I can't believe we're, we're giving people these guns to shoot and that we're putting them in ATVs and that they're riding horses. And, and I couldn't resist. I had to get on. I'm like, well, I didn't get to ride a horse. I want to ride a horse, and I want to shoot a gun. You know? And it was super cool to, to meet everyone and, and just you know, have that cool experience of meeting Tom Sr. and being in his beautiful home and the way he's so gracious and opening it up to all of us. So what, a, what an awesome opportunity that is to get refocused in life is to be able to go out and, and have fun and remember that this business, focus on fun. That would be my challenge. Let's focus on fun because that's something that, that we do every day at the office. No matter what's going on, how stressful it is, we have fun. We take time to do it. It's really important. Um, on the 17th, that will be our Sizzle Leadership Academy Day. And so the Sizzle Leadership Academy is a new certification program that will help us um, perk it, excuse me, uh, that'll be, this, this whole event will, outside of Mauer Mountain, will be at the Utah Valley Convention Center. This is a gorgeous facility. Um, some of you have been here before, uh, several years back, but um, we went and checked it out and we talked about the different places where we could congregate and where we could have meetings and where we could have a big together gathering. And so uh, with the Leadership Academy, we have several different classes um, that you can attend that you'll need to attend if you want to graduate from the Sizzle Leadership Academy. And those who graduate will be presented with a, uh, a special pin. And, what we, of course, we love to recognize you. So this will be a super cool day for us to have a chance in a more intimate setting to get hands-on training. This will be a little bit more of like a Q&A you know, whereas in a, a larger group setting, we can't always do that. So um, that'll be a lot of fun. I know we've got some good folks lined up uh, to do some of that training. And I know you guys have asked us when we've listened, you want that training. So that's what we're going to focus on for that day. And then we will have a general session on the 18th and a, and a, and a recognition uh, gala. So I was going to say gala is what we say in Canada. And uh, so you, you're not going to want to miss that. Um, we'll hear from some amazing speakers from the main stage, and uh, you'll get a, a sneak preview of things to come to that point. You know, as I think about this event and our objective here tonight to get everybody focused, we want to make sure that we begin that focusing process at the beginning of the year so that by the time you get to this event, you pretty much know what you're going to accomplish, and we are just there to put a little more fuel on the fire to help adjust those lenses so that we can stay focused in our training. We can keep our saw sharpened, as uh, Stephen R. Covey is fond of saying. You've got to make sure you keep your, your saw sharpened with your skills and your abilities. That's why we read books. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we're focused on our product testimonials, right, and, and knowing what products we lead out with. And that's where we'll, we'll get into the product training so you can have better focus and know that, you know, I like to think of focus as being efficient, right? So if you have that very short amount of time with someone, you're going to be able to tell them the right things to get them interested in whatever product that you're passionate about. So we're super excited about this opportunity to have this meeting. I know we're doing a lot of planning. i got to give kudos to to Aaron and the other team members for locking down the venue and we're, we're madly, uh, you know, getting ready for this event and it's going to be phenomenal. I promise you it's going to be um, unlike anything you've experienced before. So if you thought uh, last year's event was good, I, I mean it. This is really going to be an amazing opportunity for you to focus your business. So the last thing I want to talk about is goals. Of course, we have to talk about goals as we kick off the new year, right? Um, so it's a perfect time uh, for us to focus on goals. And so a lot of people, you know, I'm a gym guy. I, I'm in the gym, you know, all the time. Well, main, mainly in the morning before I go to work. It helps me to focus, uh, get my head straight before I head into work. And, you know, we, we talk a lot about fitness goals. And, and so many of these people, they show up, you know, the gym. It's impossible first two weeks of the gym to get a, a machine or, or a, you know, to be able to go over and, and lift weights because it's just packed full of people. But by the second week, they're all gone, right? So um, a lot of reasons why, and this, again, I'll refer you to our newsletter for January because we talk about this. And we talk about the SMART method for setting goals. 
So when setting goals, um, in this article, we, we talk about being SMART. So it stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Timely. So real quick, uh, you know, specific goals. How many people say, well, you know, I want to try to eat healthy. Well, okay, that's great. But if you're not specific, like saying, well, I will eat one full serving of fruits and vegetables per day. Well, that's a bit more specific. So it's easier for you to achieve that goal and you actually kind of have it in your mind, okay, this is what I'm going to do and this is all I'm going to do. Measurable, right? So if you say, well, I'm going to try to drink more water, well, that's, again, that's great. But how about I'm going to drink a gallon or I'm going to drink half a gallon of water every day? That's something that you can actually measure. Either you did it or you didn't, right? So um, attainable is also very important, right? Uh, an unattainable goal, would not necessarily unattainable, but again, without specificity, um, you know, I will, uh, I'm going to exercise for one hour, seven times per week, okay? That's great, but if you're, not, if you're new to exercise, that might be a little bit challenging. So how about I will exercise for a half an hour, three times per week, or you could get even more specific by saying, you know, I'm going, to, I'm going to go for a jog for a half an hour, or I'm going to go for a brisk walk uh, for a half an hour three times a week, and not start off by saying, you know what, I'm going to run a marathon. I've never run a, a day in my life, but I'm going to run a marathon. Well, it's just, it's just not going to happen, right? And then relevant would be, for example, irrelevant would be, oh, I'm going to win a major bodybuilding contest. Okay, that's probably not super relevant, but what would be relevant would be, you know, I'm going to follow a weightlifting regimen by, again, maybe spending a half an hour, three times a week, um, doing a specific weightlifting regimen. And then timely, right? So if you set a goal, um, I'm going to follow a healthy diet for the rest of my life, okay? <laughs> Good luck with that. Uh, as opposed to, I will follow a healthy diet for 30 days, right? Because what happens after the 21st day? Something becomes a habit. So, you know, that, that's a little bit more realistic and timely. So, again, I hope these tips uh, are helpful to us as we set goals. And so uh, I will talk about some of the goals that we had for 2019 as a marketing team. One of our goals was to um, make our team better. As Aaron and I talked about it, we, we realized that we needed to bring in a specific kind of talent to help us in the different aspects of our business that we felt would be relevant, where we could really move the needle, right? Because again, just like you have goals as distributors and leaders, we also have goals that need to be specific. Well, we want to make marketing better. Okay, that's pretty nebulous. How about, well, we want to hire a guy or a gal who has proficiency in event planning, or recognition, and that's what we did in Sophia Smith. Or we want to hire someone who has web experience, who has email marketing, who can write, right? Who has been a leader with another network marketing company, and that's where we brought in Ben Cook. Uh, so we had goals, and then we also challenged our existing, uh, existing employees to set specific goals for themselves. And I challenged everyone, myself included, to reinvent themselves. Because sometimes when you've been at something for a long time, you kind of get into a rut. And I know that sometimes we have to take a step back and say, how can I reinvent myself this year? Because I, I like certain aspects of myself, but other aspects, I need to get better. I need to become a better person. So I challenged everyone. And, and I said, these are the things that I'm going to do uh, myself to my team to reinvent myself. And so I think that's really important when you do set goals and when you try to focus is to make that commitment not just to yourself, but to tell other people around you, hey, this is what I'm going to do. I want you to keep me in check, right? I said I'm going to do this thing, and if you see me not doing it or you see me slamming a bunch of diet soda and a bunch of chocolate, and I said I was going to eat healthy, call me out on it. We need that accountability because sometimes our own, uh, our own will is not strong enough, okay? So, um, so again, some of our goals were to also, um, you know, focus on, on a better website experience. And so that, that continues to be a work in progress, but we made strides in that, in that respect. We also, a big goal for us was communication. So that's where we 
um, we focused on how do we communicate. We got, you, you guys have noticed maybe we've started doing the hold message. So when you call in, um, you know, you're not just listening to elevator music or, or one thing. We've actually tried to put some of that meaningful content so that you can um, get the information that you need about our different promotions or different programs that we have going on. Uh, we've, we've implemented the newsletter. We uh, have focused a lot on our email marketing and our social media and all the different ways that we communicate. And the other challenge I had for the team when I came on board was to measure things. So I've said this before, we have a screen in our area. We have a kind of a bullpen, I like to call it. And that screen is always up and it has different metrics. How many people are going to our website? How many people enrolled? What, how did we compare last month? And we can see how we've done so far for the year or month over month. And it's really helpful for us to be able to pivot if we see certain trends or we see, gosh, you know, what caused this spike? So measurement is so, so critically important in all aspects of the business. Um, you know, I, I, I guess I would just close by saying I, I of course, know what's, what's slated at least for the first quarter um, and into the, the second half or the first half of the year. And I can tell you it's going to be amazing. We have some very, very cool programs and some, of course, amazing products uh, coming down the pike. And, of course, uh, we have amazing distributors. And I think if we can focus on reaching the one, how often that needs to be for your business and for your benefit, arriving with five, and getting yourself to this event. And I promise you, if you do those things, that you will have success. But it takes discipline. And focus is discipline, in my estimation. So with that, I will turn the time back to Aaron. And thank you for, uh, for allowing me to, to take this time. And again, I, would, I just want to thank you for all that you do for Sizzle. Um, you know, it, it, uh, because of you, I can provide for my family. And that is so important to me. And I will just brag really briefly about my wife. I am learning... Uh, more about what it means to be um, a mother, if you will. My, my wife has had this amazing opportunity to go work on the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. So that's, she just graduated from law school last year, and she's already got this amazing opportunity. And that was a goal for her, and she achieved it. And so I'm trying to help her do that by being dad to four kids. And it's super cool. But again, I can do that because of this business and because of what you do. And I thank you for that. And uh, with that, I'll turn it back to Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Well, Jason, thank you so much. We could hear you perfectly. And I'll tell you what, folks, if you uh, aren't writing down notes and, and taking time to really just scribble on a piece of paper and think about the things that are important that Jason just brought up, you're missing out. You'll want to re-listen to this again because all those salient points are the things that we talk about on a daily basis. Jason and I spent... Uh, quite a bit of time earlier today talking about a few different things, really um, not about this call, but it morphed into this call and the thoughts and the ideas and the suggestions that keep coming are the ones that we think about daily. How do we help you achieve the success that you're trying to achieve? How do we give you some type of direction, some type of track to run on? You know, one of the things that I brought up this last week is that people do like measurable things or measurable items and rarely do you find somebody, like for instance, as Jason talked about, setting your goals, trying to make sure that you're disciplined and trying to achieve those goals, is that we like to measure things. So it's not as, as simple as he said, oh, I'm just going to drink uh, more water from now on this year. I'm going to really focus on drinking more water. Well, give yourself a number. Give yourself a, a, a time frame. Give yourself some intention. You know, one of the things that uh, that I had put out as a, as a little thought and idea is I sent it out to a number of individuals this, yet, this last year. And, Jason, you may have to mute your phone, by the way. Um, but Sorry. One of the things that we talked – you're okay. One of the things that we talked about uh, was the importance of intention. You know, intention is, is really intending to do something and then doing it. Uh, good intentions are really words, and they really just are fluffy parts of, your, of our life. But good intentions are the things that actually start driving us towards intention. And so I don't want you to think that that's out of whack, but there's a great book by John C. Maxwell, if those of you that uh, 
that haven't had a chance to read it. It's called The Power of Five. It's for network marketing specifically, and it's a great book. And then on uh, page 71, it actually talks about words of good intentions and words of intentional living. And so I want you to think about these couple of things. Words of good intentions, desire. Words of intentional living, action. Words of good intentions, wish. Words of intentional living, purpose. And it goes on as it continues to talk about uh, uh, the good intentions versus intentional living. But one would be someday. Uh, intentional would be today. Good intentions would be fantasy. Intentional living would be strategy. Good intention would be hopefully. Intentional living would be definitely. Uh, one would be passive versus active. Occasional versus continual. Emotion versus discipline. Somebody ought to versus I will. So when you think about the things that you're trying to accomplish as you, as you set out on your course this year, I want you to think about a couple of things. One is we have to be intentional in terms of the things that we're trying to accomplish this year. There's no way that we can do things unintentionally. There's no way that we can see successes unless we have something to measure them by. And so one of the things that I talked about uh, about a week ago with Tom Sr., had Jason in there, had Ben in there, and, and Tom Sr., we were talking about a few things uh, dealing with some product and launches and strategies and all that good stuff. And as we were sitting there chatting, I just made the comment. I said, people like to measure. And, and when I go out for a walk, I actually, when I'm walking the dogs, I actually like to hit my outdoor walk on my Apple Watch. I'm not trying to put a plug in for Apple, but I will say that I, that I like to put in this outdoor walk and then I like to measure it. And so if I go 3.3 miles, I like it. I say, well, I've got 3.3 miles walking the dogs. And if you know my little uh, puppy Boomer, who's not so small anymore, uh, walking Boomer is like uh, literally trying to hold back a Volkswagen bug. So when we're out there, it's this intentional relationship between what we're trying to do and what we hope to do, and this relationship between doing and saying. And so a lot of times we say things, we have good intentions, and we want things to happen. But again, like we always joke about in the office, hope is not a strategy. It really isn't. And you can think it is. You can think that it's something that has a measurable effect. But hope is purely hope. It's, it's this fictitious relationship between what you want and what you hope to accomplish and then what you set out to accomplish. And so I want you to think about some of those things as I start bringing on some of our guests tonight because we have got so many things happening that I want every one of us to think about the things that we need to do on a daily basis to get to the numbers that we expect in this business as we, as we take the first steps towards 2020. And uh, we've got a great guest on right now, Daniel White at DW. You've had a lot of experience, a lot of background. In your estimation, what is it that people need to do starting now that they can put into practice tonight, even tonight or tomorrow uh, or during the day as it relates to those people that are on tonight from Australia, New Zealand, uh, we've got some Japanese callers in tonight. So what is it that you would say are the things that people need to do starting today in three minutes to get to that point where they feel confident they are moving down a path with intention? DW, welcome to the call. I'll tell you what, Aaron, it's a joy to be here. Jason just absolutely did phenomenal. Call him Mr. Smooth. I'm not smooth like that, but there's a couple things you want to, you want to focus on. And that's, it's kind of interesting because in order to focus on somebody else, you need to focus on growing yourself. Become intentionally and, and just uh, intentionally intentional, which is what we call true intentions about growing yourself. Then you focus on everybody else around you and, and get your eyes off yourself. So it's kind of interesting. You focus on building yourself just so you can get your eyes off yourself. And that becomes kind of a, a, a massive deal. And then you want to have a, a track to run on. I have a eight-step system that we do, and it's called the. It's basically called the I get two steps. So move your attitude from I gotta or I have to to I get to, and and, and start focusing on I get to. And when you do that, I mean, if you look at one of these steps, each one get one. That's such a nice little fun cliche, but I'm telling you what, you know, they they talk about hindsight is 2020. 
Well, my hind doesn't have any sight, and I'm looking forward, Darren, not, not hind. I'm looking forward to 2020. We're going to own it. We're going to walk into it. It's, it's a prophetic word over Sizzle International that this is our year. How do you know that? Because Aaron declared it, and we're on his team. He's our general, and we're making this year happen. Jason's on board. All the leaders you're going to hear from are on board. Our international leaders are on this call. Double hugs to you. You're on board. So we don't, we're not doing any hindsighting. We're doing forward sighting, and we're moving forward with three things. Desire. Des find out what your desires are. Then get number two, get dedicated to what those desires are. Get a, get a desire that I get to bring in 20 new people in 2020. Get the desire that I'm packing up and my car holds five. I'm putting five in it, and I'm taking them to the next event. End of discussion. That's what I'm doing. Get, get focused on on the simple fact that uh, you know that, that you're going that you're going to bring those bring those five with you and in each one reach one you know and so and and, and bring twenty new people in. The last thing you, you want to do is, is is desire, dedication, then determination. So you focus on those three things because you're going to be dedicated and determined to get what your desire is. And so you need to find out what your real why, what your real want is, and, and go for it. Get something so big it just makes you cringe inside because it's bigger than you. And one of our steps is kind of interesting, and, and it, we, we would talk about this. When you begin to bring 20 people in, what if those 20, this is kind of interesting, Aaron, what if, when those 20 you bring in, those 20 you help them just simply bring in a few people, help them bring in four, and then, uh, or just say three, make it simple, help those each 20 bring in three, and then each one of those three bring in two. By the time you're done with that, you're at $4,000 a month just by helping 20 people who brought two in, who brought two, and then two more. You're, you've, you've got some really good income. So let's do this. Let's focus on the simple things. And, and if you want to hit 20 new people this year, bring in one a month. That's a slow track. But if you brought 20 in in the next 90 days, now you're going to have some perpetual momentum. And we'll find out what your true intentions are. Because I guarantee you, Jason and Aaron's tracking what we're doing. And your true intentions will always show up in your results. Results that often are very harsh are always fair because they're results. So you want to measure, monitor, and adjust. Look at your results and focus on what's next, that next person that you're bringing forward. And you do that by finding out what their desire, what their why, what they want to accomplish in life, and help them go get what they want, not what you want. Back at you, Aaron. Well, DW, thank you. And you're right, absolute intention. It's about each word that we say has an intention to create action. That's the bottom line. And, folks, I hope that that breaks it down to the simplest thought and idea because what DW is saying is, is that absolutely 100% correct. We have to have absolute intention to create action. And once you create that action, you can start running. And you're right. There's no reason to look back other than to help you form your strategy because what you have to look at how did that work for you last year? And I want everybody to think about this. How did that work out for you last year? Did it get you whatever your goals were? Did it get you to where you want to be this year? Or did you forget to write down your goals? Did you forget to measure your goals? And did you forget to actually follow through on your goals? Because if you didn't do any of that and you really focused on true intention and went out and did it, I know that we've had people, and I can tell you that there are going to be people on this call coming up in the next couple of minutes, that you're going to hear from them and you're going to find out they had true intention and part of those goals were something that absolutely came true for them. Now, I will tell you that Amanda Koblenz, you're on the call now, and uh, folks, I, gotta, I just really want to just keep a smile on your face because here's the interesting thing. We're out at Mauer Mountain. We're having a great time. I had Elsie Stolzfus. I had uh, Amanda Koblenz and her, her sister, uh, Katie Ann, they both, uh, or they all three came up to me. They said, hey, can we go for a ride with you in the side-by-side, -side, the ATV, the uh, whatever they call them, the Razor kind of deal. And I said, absolutely. So we hop out and start going around on Tom's property, and we went up this beautiful vista. We are standing there overlooking the vista, and I said to them, uh, you know, what do you guys think? Is that not beautiful? And so as we were sitting there just chatting about life, Elsie Stolzfus, and I know, Amanda, I'm sorry, I'm going to make you blush a little bit, but Amanda – I uh, had had this conversation, I guess, in a team meeting. So Elsie decided to share it. And what Amanda said was to her group, all I want for Christmas is Aaron. Now, something like that. So I'm going to tell you that uh, what she asked for is something that came true as a result of her just asking for it, her reaching out, her saying to me, 
what is it that I need to do to get you out to Pennsylvania in December or January? Now, this is back in September, folks. And so we talked about it, and I said, you know, it might be tough to do it by the end of December. I said, I've got a big, uh, a big event that I'm going to down in Florida with Ray Hutchison. I'm excited about that event. So I said, I'm just not sure that I can pull it off before then. But I said, I'll do it right before I go to Europe because I was planning on going there at the end of January. She said, that would be great. What, what do I need to do to get that done? I said, well, here, we just got to fill up the room. Let's do that. So with good intention, she, she wanted, she hoped, she desired, but with true intention, she actually created action and started following through. So Amanda Koblenz, welcome to the call. Your true intention got you to the point where you now have me coming out there. I'll be out there, folks, uh, the 17th and 18th in Punxsutawney. I'm super excited about it. I'm excited about the, the group that's coming. I'm excited about the energy that's forming, and I can feel it from here in Utah. So Amanda Koblenz, welcome to the call. What do we need to do to prepare for these types of events? You've been pushing the Arrive with Five, the Each One Reach One, and now you've got this big giant challenge that Tom Maurer Sr. put out, which is 20 and 20. What say ye, Amanda Koblenz? Well, hey, good evening, everyone, and it's just such a, a wonderful, this has been a wonderful call, and it's great to be on the call, and I want to thank you and Jason and the whole team for what you guys do, and uh, like you said, um, I guess blushing is, is okay. You can go and make yourself, you know, say, telling it to your team right when I did that was uh, keep. I did that to keep myself accountable. So this, but this is just amazing. Um, but I didn't meet Sophia. I just wanted to say this. I met Sophia and Ben Cope when I was out at Mom Mountain, and these people there are just awesome. Keep up the great work, and thank you guys. Um, but what can I do? What would you ask me? So what are some of the things that people can do to encourage people to come? So I would say for, for myself, when I got started in civil, um, I had a focus. I, I wanted to quit my job. I wanted to quit where I was working at, and I could only do that once I wrote it on a piece of paper and I truly focused on that and I really went after it. Um, you have to really want it and focus on it. And what I did last year to accomplish a lot of my goal was I tracked it every single day. I had, I had something with me that I tracked everything I did, and I had my whole team involved the whole time. And even this event with Aaron Renner coming out here, uh, starting off 2020, and everybody's just focused and excited to have him coming out, out here. And I say, your team will do what you do. So I'm doing the Arrive with Five myself. And I'm showing that to them, writing names down on those lines and arriving with five myself and then having a gift for them, uh, you know, to thank them, to uh, just give them something to work towards. And that way they all know you're, you're in it together. It's not just a one-person uh, one team. So this has just been a great call. Thank you, Aaron. I hope I answered your questions, but I don't want to take up too much time. So back to you. Well, Amanda, I appreciate it. And if everybody uh, hasn't had a chance to see the Koblen sisters singing on um, our YouTube channel or, or anywhere else, it just happens to be the number one trending video that we've ever had. So uh, there's something special other than the fact that I also make the joke that um, it appears that uh, there may be a lot more people that enjoy technology than I thought. So that is the good news, and I'm excited to be out there with Amanda. So thank you for your intention. Uh, and that intentional piece of you trying to put together uh, a great, great event, because I, I really am. I'm super excited about it. I'm super excited about what, uh, what we can look forward to seeing as we get ready for this, uh, this next year. So as we look at that, you know, it was interesting. I went out to this wonderful event down in Florida. We did an incredible opportunity meeting uh, on a Friday night, and then the next day we had training all day. We had some great leadership in the field that was there. Uh, but Ray Hutchison put it together, and one of the things that I loved is that I came away with a, a, a gift, and I really mean that sincerely. I came away with a gift, not just better friendships and not just better uh, uh, inspiration, motivation, not just the relationship that was created, but I came away with this wonderful planner, the, the High Achievers Annual Playbook, uh, that Ray gave as a gift to every single person that came to that event. And so we all received this incredible, uh, this incredible relationship uh, that we've got that came from, a, a, it's truly network marketing, and it's an, it's an amazing book that I've been putting into practice and using myself, and it's really interesting because it takes you through the day-to-day-to-day-to-day-to-day 
And it was a, it's a great opportunity for us to really go out and try to help people understand what it is that we're doing, how we're doing it, why we're doing it that way. And then also gives us a chance, as, as DW talked a little bit about, it's not so much your hindsight that you're spending all the time looking in the rearview mirror. You're actually looking ahead. But you can reflect back on the, on the past. What did I do well? What did I do different? Or what do I need to do differently in order for me to succeed this year and, and change the direction that I was going? Well, Ray, I believe you changed that. For those people in Florida that hadn't had a big corporate event out there for, for quite some time, and we were able to go out there. We had a great group. We had a great showing. And as a result, we've got a great group of people that are, that are focused and, and, again, with intention. We're looking forward to already another event coming up in the next probably 10 or 11 months. So, Ray Hutchison, welcome to the call. Hey, good evening, Aaron and everybody. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, just uh, listening back and, and hearing uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, I know we're, what, six days into the new year. Um, but, Aaron, yes, I mean, that, that book, even for me, uh, it, it's, it's, it's the intentions of what's going in the book, right? You can... That book becomes part of your life if you allow it to be. As anybody could take any book and do it. Obviously, this one's more geared toward this, but you can use it for your personal life, um, your your, your uh, physical life. Um, there's so many things you incorporate, and, and I'm excited for the people that will come back with those books. And basically, you know, about a year from now, we're going to push it to the January of next year. It will happen for those that will come for the first time. There will be that book for you. For those that will come back, you'll be able to repeat, and, and it'll be so easy, almost like going back to school, Aaron, when you had uh, when the teacher came up to you and said, hey, let me see what you got in your book so far. And if you had nothing in your book, it was clear that either you were a daydreamer, you had the thoughts, but you didn't put it on paper. You didn't, you didn't have the intention to put it forward, right? And, and that's the thing. This kind of helps you, and it, it's helped me, believe me. I hope it's helping everybody that was there. And for those that have heard about it, I hope it's helped you to just – Try to find something that keeps you on track. But it's helped me every day because I, I put something in it every day. It's helped me get through. It's helped me not look back, basically. What it's done for me is helped me look forward with the intention that, hey, this book will be full. By the time I get to the last page of this book, I'll be in St. Augustine a year from now. But before that, this book in my life will take me through Pennsylvania, through Indiana, through Ohio, through New York, through Connecticut, through parts of North Carolina, through Florida. And so it's just those intentions. And I love what we're laying out here for everybody um, from the 20 and 2020. I, I, I think it's great. And, and, the, and the thing is this, guys, today's January 6th. It's kind of like a diet. What are you waiting on? You know what? It's, it's almost virtually impossible not to infect 20 people with your passion and your optimism about this company. So if it means – now the question we don't know is – do I have to talk to 300 people or do I have to talk to 20? Tom Mallow would say, hey, I only need to talk to 20. Tom would probably only talk to 20, and that would be his 20. Why? His confidence, his ability to learn how to sell, his ability to know what he's selling, and his ability to show the need for something, right? Any of you that does sat in front of Tom, phenomenal salesperson, very good and very endearing to what he's doing. My point to this, Aaron, is that we have the ability. We have, what, 300 and I don't know, let's call it 350 some odd days left, right, to infect 20 people. Not hard to do, but what's going to be hard is to have that intention every day to get to that. Whether you get to 20, like you did said earlier, if you get to 20 in January, or you get to 20 uh, on December you know, 31st at the end of 2020, it's really irrelevant. The fact is that you get on that path. And, I, and I'm looking at all the other things that we have that arrive with five, you know, it's always been taught in this industry or taught in any business. Don't come alone because you're going to grow with people that are by your side or more people you have or the more customers you have or the more anything in any business you're going to grow. But sometimes when it's in front of our face, and that's a pretty cool Jason and whoever, arrive with five, I kind of like that, right, because we know what that means. And so is, are you going to be less of a person if you arrive with two or three? No. But imagine if you keep striving all year round to get to this next event and arrive with five. I don't care. If you go to 12 events and you arrive at one, that's 12 new people that will be introduced to it. That's 12 out of the 20 that I can almost guarantee if they come to an event, they're going to see there's no risk. They're going to see, I need to get on these products. I need to know them. I need to see this opportunity. I need to give this opportunity out to people. And, and that's how you, you start to follow forward. And if you can write this stuff down, some kind of general plan, 
why not journal yourself? How great would it be if a lot of us can get together in a year's time and say, you know what, this one had this happen, this one had this. Hey, guys, I came out of August, you know, I had this going against me, this, 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 but I was able to keep on track and accomplish this, this, and this. Because of the strength of what you, you choose to do and it's the intention of what, what you plan on doing. And I agree. Hope is great to have, but it's not going to be able to get you there. Probably the faith that you have and what you believe in is going to drive you. But you still have to have the intention and actually do it. And I, I'll, I'll say this to myself and say this to everybody. Just because you talk about it, don't mean crap. And, you know, that's something we all need, the, the, the reality of it. And I say that from the, the bottom of my heart to everybody, including myself. Talk about it's great. We all, sooner or later, become good talkers because we do it enough. Talking's great. That's why lately in my life, people around me say, you know, you talk great. Show me your actions because you know what? Don't listen to what I say. Watch what I do. And that's the things. We need to find that strength. What we have here is second to none. What we can do with it is second to none. The people that, the lives that we can change through this is just amazing. And so I, my hat's off to you, Aaron, and the whole, whole marketing staff and everybody <clears throat> what a year this could be for Sizzle International and its partners, which are all of us. What a year it could be for the corporate staff. What a year it could be for anybody because what a difference we can make and, and, and be known. And, you know, our stamp could be on a lot more people going into 2020. And I like the, the focus thing. My thing's been the vision. But once you have vision, what do you need next? If you see something you can envision, now you got to focus to achieve it. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great um, – it's like taking a step. You take one step, you know you can do it. Okay, now what makes you take those following steps? Moving forward is the key to life. Moving backward doesn't get you anywhere most of the time. But finding a way to move forward that gets you to where you want to be. So thank you for having me on the call tonight, Aaron. I'm very excited about 2020, and I'm, I'm a very happy New Year to all of you, uh, partners, friends, and you know, listen to this call and get this call out and make that commitment to one another. Uh, like Jason said, let's be accountable. The people that have ever gotten in shape in life or accomplished the biggest things, they were the ones that stayed accountable accountable to someone or something. So if you don't have someone to be accountable to, then find something to be accountable to, even if it's the person that's looking back at you at the mirror and watch what you can do with the, with the right things uh, in your hands. And clearly sizzle is the right thing in most of our hands. What, the question is what can we do with this in our lives this year in 2020 if we're focused right well, Ray, thank you so much. And again, uh, that the event down in Florida was absolutely powerful, folks. And I'm looking forward to the events in January uh, where we'll be out there with Marianne Stoltzfus. We'll be out there with Amanda Koblenz. We'll be out there with Elsie. We'll be out there with Katie Ann. We'll be out there with Dorothy. We'll be out there with Laura Pacini. And I think Ray's going to be there. And who knows all the people that are going to be there. I always feel bad when I don't mention everybody's names. I can't imagine uh, what it's like if you have to stand up and win an award and have to go through all those names. But the fact is, again, folks, we have an opportunity. It's staring you in the face right now, and you have to go out and do it. And like Ray said, talk is cheap. You know, have you ever had? Have you ever watched the big talker, the the uh, guy that runs around? He's got a big mouth. He's uh, egging everybody on, and then uh, you know he's the guy that goes into the ring to have a boxing match, and he's the first guy to get knocked out. That's talk is cheap. What we want to do is we want to help people understand that we are here, we're not going anywhere, we've got great intention, and one of those people that has created that, even for me, that I've learned a lot and understood a lot and been able to grasp a lot more as a result of my conversations with this person is Mary Ann Stoltzfus. And Mary Ann, you, have just, you just continue to amaze me and impress me, and you give all these thoughts and ideas and suggestions, as well as the opportunity to come out. Because when I said I was going out to see Amanda, Basically, Marianne said, well, I'm right around the corner, so all you have to do is just come see us, and we can hang out. So, Marianne, thanks for being on the call. What do we need to do this year, 2020, to help people achieve the greatest, greatest successes that they've ever achieved in their entire lifetime? What do we need to do to help them achieve that? And then we've got this event coming up. What do people need to know in order to get to this event? Wow, wow, what a call so far. You know, at first I was sitting on my seat, and then it was the edge of my seat, and then DW, when you started talking, I was standing up, and I'm standing up and pacing the floor now. Uh, first of all, I, I want to thank God for this opportunity. I want to thank God for, for the wisdom that he has given the Mowers, and for the corporate team. You guys, you guys are amazing. 
You guys are absolutely amazing. Jason, you know, Amanda said she wants the, uh, she wants uh, Aaron for Christmas next uh, last year. Well, you know what? We'll take you for Christmas next year. <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway, um, number one, number one is, you know, we, we, heard, we heard about where Sizzle is from you, Aaron. And Jason, you talked about smart goals. DW, you talk about true intentions. Ray, you talked about, or Amanda, you talked about tracking. And then, Ray, you talked about accountability. But there's something else that I want to talk about. This has really been on my heart. And that is, number one, let's just draw a ring. Draw a ring, a, a big circle, and put your name in that. I have one right here on my desk, and it says Marianne. Then I have an arrow pointing out from that. And on top of that arrow is plan, and underneath is a purpose. God has a plan and purpose for me. Now, outside of that ring, there are my fears and my assumptions. There's naysayers. There's maybe people in my circle of influence that don't believe in me or don't believe in what I'm doing. But there is one person that looks down into that circle, and he knows the truth. And that person is God. It doesn't matter what anybody says outside of that circle. The only thing that matters is what God sees, and that is the truth. And he has a plan and a purpose for me. So when we are setting our goals and when we have our vision of what we want to do and our true intentions, there is things that hold us back, and that is our fears. That is our assumptions of what we think people are saying. I guess my, my tip for myself is to be true to myself and to not worry about what anybody says and just stay focused on the one who truly cares about me. So wherever you are, the stumbling blocks that are in front of you, before we can reach those goals, we also have to understand what are our obstacles and how am I going to overcome them. You talked about that. I think it was you, Jason. You talked about that. And that is, you know, when we have, uh, for myself, um, Evan down at down in uh, Florida really gave me some insight on helping to lose weight. So for myself, I need an accountability partner. I need somebody to help me with those steps to stay strong, to stay true. What, no matter what you are doing in Sizzle, your obstacles, understand what they are and how you are going to, don't, don't just avoid them. Avoiding them, they will still be there. But embrace them, overcome them, and find victory. Find victory, and then that passion go on. Here's another thing that I wanted that was in my thoughts as, as, as you guys were talking. Every man and woman out there wants what is best for themselves, for their families, and for their loved ones. And I am I, I, so grateful that DW and Katie did not give up on me when I had said no once. When I had said no twice to sizzle, and when I had said no three times, and I thank you guys for not giving up on me, because sizzle has everything that there is needed for us to live that healthy life of abundance, for, for us to, to have that team of influence around us, and for us to become successful. What does successful mean? Successful, Eric Thomas says a successful person is one who achieves the desired aim or attains prosperity. However, this is defined by the individual who is striving towards success. To a baby who is trying to walk, it might be the first step. They fall down, but they don't even realize that they fell down. They get back up and they walk again. So what is our next step of success? I know what my, what ours is. I know what level we're aiming for next. And we have some, some work to do. We have some obstacles to overcome. But my number one goal this year is to not only um, move forward with our sizzle business, but to help each one of my team members that is, that is on board with us with this Arrive by Five and, and to, to lock arms and to move everybody forward together. The choice is yours. Do you want to join us? Or do you want to sit by the sidelines? Aaron, I, I, I'm, I am so passionate about where Sizzle is at. And I am so passionate about the stories that are coming in, the lives that are being changed. I mean, just last week, there was this mom and daddy with this, their, their child who is uh, special, and they thought they were going to lose her. They were already thinking of, you know, making, making arra- not arrangements, but And now she's getting better. She is getting better. And that is one story out of many. 
But shoot, <laughs> I'm not doing a whole session here. But Aaron, Aaron, my heart is my heart is so full. And to the whole civil nation, do we really truly understand what we have our hands on? Do we really truly understand? I don't. I don't. And even though my heart is full. So, um, Aaron, did you want me to give the addresses of when you're going to be in here? I would, I would love it. Why don't you go ahead, Marianne? All right, I will. So on Thursday, January the 16th, uh, how to build a successful business with Sizzle. You know, Aaron and I were talking, we were talking about bringing in multifaceted um, teachings into one training. So when we go to a meeting, do we go by ourselves or do we bring someone with us who we learn together? When we share a product, do we just share information on the product? Or at the same time, do we encourage people to think of who could use this product? So when I'm sharing about the brain vitality, people may be taking notes, oh, brain vitality is good for the ADD, ADHD. But instead of just writing that down, let's have them write down who they think that could use this product. Aaron, how did I get off on that track? Anyway, so Aaron is going to be sharing many different things on how to build a successful business from 1.30 to 4 o'clock on Thursday, January the 16th. You don't want to miss this event. If you're here in Lancaster County or in the surrounding areas, that's going to be at the Intercourse Fire Hall in uh, the 10 North Hollander Road, Gordon Mill, Pennsylvania. In the evening, we're going to be at a very special place that is the new home of Sam and Mary Sulap. Their address is 359 Redwell Road, New Holland, Pennsylvania. Everybody is welcome, but we do encourage, if you want to come, bring a guest, um, because there is limited space. And so bring a guest, come to learn, arrive with five. For reservations, call 717-799-4533. And then we have a whole tour that is coming up. And tomorrow by 12 o'clock, you will have that whole tour on a recorded uh, call. And I will give you that recorded call now. This tour is going into uh, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and Indiana, and then ending with the Mini Masters and then the Masters Convention. That number will be 712-775-7471, and the code is 336431-POUND. You can listen to that after 12 tomorrow. Aaron, thanks a lot for having me on the call. And we're excited about the, the, the new year. We're excited about 2020, but we're even more excited about watching the, the new people to grasp this, to grow, and to join, join in the trenches and bringing their five, arriving. Yes. Back to you. <laughs> Marianne, thank you. Uh, everybody needs to know that the, Marianne is just infectious. If you, uh, if you really understand what's in her heart, if you can really grasp what she what she uh, has in her organizational thoughts every day. She sent me her goals, and literally, um, I, I mean, literally, it almost put me in tears because her goals are so succinct, they are so focused, and they have so much intention to them, but they also have timelines, folks, and a lot of people have a tough time setting goals. A lot of people have a tough time uh, putting pen to paper and feeling confident that what they put down is going to be something that they can work towards or achieve. Don't worry about that, folks. Like Ray said earlier, if you arrive with two, great job. If you arrive with three, great job. If you arrive with one, fantastic. We applaud you for bringing somebody to these events and giving yourself the opportunity to expose others to what you've learned and what you now know. So the great news is, as Marianne talked about, you have a chance. You've got these other venues that are coming up, other different uh, spots in the U.S. that you guys can just literally hit your wagon to and go and enjoy and have a great time and learn a lot. And that's really what we're talking about. And so uh, one of the things that I came up with, or one of the reasons why I came up with the Arrive With Five is there's a great story that Tom Maurer Sr. has told for years and years. And it's about uh, the fact that when he had his previous company, it was starting to grow. They were looking for space. They were meeting in hotels. It was here in Salt Lake City. And they were kind of bouncing around from hotels, kind of doing the same one. And they ended up having to move to a different one that had a little bit more space for them. And Tom said that, uh, that one night he was walking into this hotel and as he was walking in, he saw a couple of people that he knew that had been at his meetings and, and uh, they were distributors with his previous company. And so he said to them, hi, you know, and they said, whoa, what are you doing here, Tom? And Tom said, oh, well, I guess you're here for the meeting tonight. And they said, oh, actually, we've decided to join a different company. We just couldn't quite make it with your company. And Tom said, you know why you couldn't make it? 
because just like the other company, every time you came to a meeting, you arrived by yourself. And just like tonight, you're not going to make it here either unless you start bringing people to these events. And so I tell you that story quickly. There's a little bit more embellishment to it. But I tell you that story quickly because it's so important for us to understand that if we truly have an intention of building our business this year, then start thinking about those people, as Jason talked about earlier, who do I know that needs this information? Who do I know that needs uh, uh, some details or some thoughts or some ideas about uh, adding additional income to their household uh, budget? Who do I know that needs some help with, uh, with their health? Who are those people? And then that's where the good intention comes uh, into play, which then leads to true intention or intentional living. And that's really where you want to be. And with that being said, Doc Fizz, uh, Kurt Fisnick, he's going down to Australia and New Zealand here in the next uh, couple weeks. And I'll tell you what, you want to talk about a full calendar. Uh, I saw the one that he had last year. He sent me his calendar uh, earlier. And again, folks, you need to realize these are all part of the goals that people send out. And I want you to think about that because Ray talked about an accountability coach. Marianne talked about accountability coach. And, and uh, we'll talk about accountability but, Doc Fizz, you've done a phenomenal job. You go down uh, to Australia and New Zealand at least once or twice a year. Uh, you're focused on your team there. You're focused on your team here. What, and, and uh, we may have to cut this a little bit short, but what is it that people need to think about, especially as our hearts go out towards those, or to those people uh, who are suffering right now, who are homeless right now, who have had the issues of the fires down in Australia, and it's just been an absolute horrible disaster for them. And so our hearts and prayers go out to them. But, Doc Fizz, what can people expect to see and learn as they come to your events down in Australia and New Zealand, and what do they need to do to bring five people with them? Doc Fizz, welcome to the call. You bet. Can you hear me, Aaron? I can hear you perfect. Perfect. You know, uh, I was listening to everybody talk. I've been listening to you and Jason. And, and really, you know, 2020, it's the perfect year for everybody to step out of their comfort zone and leave their failures behind, develop new habits. You know, and... And really, doesn't that sound familiar? It sounds like the same thing you told yourself in 2019. It sounds like the same thing that you told yourself in 2018 and 17. I mean, we can go back in history and you'll find that, you know, you set these goals for yourself all the time. And uh, right now, you know, here we are, we're going into the second week, and they say that 80% of, faith, of people are already creating that self-doubt in their brain. They're already starting to say, oh, I can't do it. And, and, and so by the third week in January, over 80% of people have gave up on their, on their New Year's resolution. They gave up on their goals already. And so I always try and tell people, you know, here's a really way, a good way to make it work. And like, like everybody's been talking about as far as goal setting, you know, you got to keep it with, in something that, that's um, going to work. But start asking yourself every day. When you get up, you say, what can I do today to help myself reach my goal? And then repeat your goal to yourself. Say it all out loud. And, say, and, and say, your, say to yourself, what can I do today to help myself lose that extra 50 pounds? And what happens is, is that it does something uh, crazy in your brain. You know, I'm a doctor, so I like, I like talking about what goes on. And your brain is designed to solve problems. And so if you create a problem, you know, and you, ha and, and you ask yourself that question, your brain's going to try and come up with the answer. And so, so challenge yourself. You know, I'm going to be going down to Australia here in less than a month and challenge yourself for everybody that's in Australia. Who do you know that might like to figure out how to make an extra 500 to to $1,000 a month? Who do you know that would like to, um, you know, get healthier? If you live in the United States or you live in Canada or you live in Europe and you're listening to this call, listen to this recording, who do you know that knows somebody in Australia? You know, and, and, and I'm going down there, and um, really my presentation this year, it's going to be focused on the new people. It's going to be focused on who you bring to that group. If you're showing up and, and you're just coming by yourself, you're going to hear a lot of the same things that you've heard Aaron talk about. You're going to hear a lot of the same things that you've heard me talk about. You're going to go, you're going to go oh, this is perfect. I should have brought Fill in, the name, fill in the gap there with whoever you want to think of. But don't just think that after I get there. Think it right now. And if you live in Perth, get somebody to Melbourne. If you live in Melbourne, get somebody to Brisbane. And, 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 and think about that. And so when I'm down there, I'm going to be – I got a full schedule. They got me busy. Every year uh, they got me busy. 
Last year I was there for, uh, for a month and I did 26 meetings. The year before, I was down there for three weeks, and I did I did 29 meetings. And so they keep me they keep me busy doing things. So I'll be in uh, I'll be in Brisbane on the second. Then I'm going to be in Sydney on the third. I'll be in Auckland, New Zealand on the fourth and fifth. Then I'll be over in uh, Adelaide on the ninth. I'll be over in uh, Perth on the 11th, and then back to Melbourne on the 16th, and then. Uh, so my, my presentation, the main presentation I'm going to be doing is, uh, is going to be an opportunity presentation. I've got it all uh, down cold. I've been practicing it. And it takes me about uh, half an hour to 45 minutes to do the presentation. And then we're going to do about a half hour of, of, of uh, testimonials. Here's what I'm going to do, because as you probably know, Australia is burning up right now. Um, thank God there's some rain starting, but um, the, the whole country is on fire. And, you know, and I wish I could just give them all the money in the world to, to, to solve their problems over there. I can't. Um, but what I'm going to do is for every person that comes to a meeting, I'm going to donate a dollar to, um, to a wildlife fund where they're taking care of these uh, uh, koalas that have been getting burnt up and kangaroos and wallabies and all other animals. They say um, half a billion animals have burnt up down there. And so I'm going to donate a dollar for every person that comes to a meeting, and I'll donate two dollars for every guest that you bring. So if you bring five, I'm donating ten dollars uh, plus a dollar for you. So that's eleven dollars if you bring if you bring five people with you. Um, and uh, you know, I'm just trying to do my part that we that we can. And 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 the big thing that Bob Proctor says is he says that you know once you <coughs> have something in your conscious mind and and you start developing that self-doubt, that's what's going to go into your subconscious mind, and, and you can't let that happen because it's what's in your subconscious mind that turns into your actions. And so you have to, you have to really, really, really believe it in, in your conscious mind to make it work. So, uh, Aaron, I hope I covered that pretty quickly for you. Well, uh, Kurt, absolutely, 100%, and I appreciate it. And I do, again, uh, hearts and prayers and and love goes out to those people in Australia that are just literally physically uh, going through this tough time. So we, we want to think about that. And we've got um, all kinds of crazies in this world. I saw something that there have been over 200 arsonists that have been arrested over the course of uh, uh, this fire season for Australia. And I'll tell you what, it is ridiculous even to think that that's happening. I have no idea how true that is or the, the validity of that. But to think that that's happening, it absolutely makes me sick to my stomach. And to think that, that people are out there uh, causing this pain and these problems. But great opportunity, Doc, for you to go down there and to bring hope again and to bring uh, some thoughts and ideas that will help and give people the, uh, the, the clear direction that they need. And what I always tell people, by the way, and I want everybody to hear this loud and clear, the presentation that Doc's doing is not for the people that have heard it 10 times or 100 times. It's for the new person that's never heard it before. So think about that, folks. We, we sit down and we think and we cogitate and we go through all of these facts and thoughts and ideas. And as a relation, it starts to come together and we start to formulate some opinions and, and some things that we believe will help people understand and, and determine you know, the best course of action for them. But the bottom line is, when people say, well, I've seen that presentation before, guess what? You didn't bring anybody, and that's why you've seen it before, because you came by yourself the last time, and you came by yourself again this time, and you did see it, but I'd rather know what somebody's presenting on versus a big surprise. And a lot of times I've had some big surprises, and I haven't been very impressed, by the way. I'd rather know the known quantitative piece that I'm actually excited about hearing. So with that being said, Doc, thanks for the, the update. Thanks for telling everybody the cities that you'll be in. It's going to be an exciting tour, and I know that he's down there for a few weeks and, and uh, focused not only on those big events, but he's got all these ancillary pieces that he's putting in play right now. So, again, be safe on your travels, and thanks again for, uh, for being out there and being a great champion of the business and the company. And, and to just take it to that next level, Laura Bacini, again, as I've always said, I have always told people, if you want to stay busy, look at Laura's calendar. Because I'll tell you what, Doc Fizz is out there running in one uh, part of the world. You're running in the U.S. And, and uh, as, as Marianne talked about, there's just event after event after event. And I know that you're involved in a lot of those. You're going to be gone for a couple weeks. But Laura Bacini, tell us, <laughs> maybe just quickly, just quickly, what do we need to do as we roll into 2020 
what do we need to do to have clear intention and have a desire and, and really make a good choice on how we're going to get to our goals in 2020? Well, hey, Aaron, what a great call, long, but I love, love, love it. It's definitely something we want to get out to all our people, and imagine we only meet once a month, so we got it all in, in one night. But uh, 2020 focus, and you're right, everyone's using 2020, but that's the year, and I love the promotion 20 and 20, but leading up to that, the whole thing about focus, focusing on your business, focusing on your fun factor, focusing on and keeping yourself educated. Make sure you're out attending these events. Make sure you're bringing new people, arrive with five. Um, focus on your dream and putting that, in, you know, that focus into a game plan and making it happen. And I love that, you know, Doc said, uh, challenge yourself. It's all about challenging yourself. Uh, you're in business for yourself. I just love it. But if you can imagine each one or each one, you double your team. So whether you have one people, ten people, or a hundred, if each one reaches one, you're going to double your team. And just focus on that and helping your people and imagine if they do that and then they carry that on to their new people. And then arrive with five new guests. Imagine if five bring five, you have 25 new guests. We just keep talking about it and doing it. And, and I love that, you know, there's people that are offering gifts. There's people that are offering dollars, whatever it is. You can offer free coffee if that's what fits in your budget. But just uh, arrive with five new guests. That is absolutely a, a great focus to have. But the 20 and 20, when I got that, oh, my goodness, I got so excited. Talked to a few people on my team, and some people were like, wow, 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 that would be so great, a 2020 club, part of an elite group. We could do this. And we all started talking. A few people got totally fearful, and then – uh, you know, I was like, stop, don't be afraid, you know, think about what can go right, not what could go wrong, and think about being positive and imagine that you can do this. So I started thinking about 20 does sound like a lot to a lot of people, but is it beyond your wildest imagination? Wow, 20, can I do that? Yes, absolutely, positively, no doubt in my mind, everybody can do this. I don't care if you're brand new today or you've been around a long time. Focus on 20 and 20, and how is it possible? What I always do is I back things out, and, and you know the end result is 20, but how are you going to get there? What does it look like, and how can you hit that? It's clarity, it's focus. But how many people do you need to reach to do that? And I'm going to go with the standard. You know, I know that there's some people who have total confidence and, and will go out and recruit every person they talk to, but the average statistic is 10% of who you actually connect with is going to join your business. So that's 200 people. And some people say, oh, 200, I could never talk to 200. Well, no one's asking you to talk to 200 in a week or a month. It's a whole year. And all you need to do is, and when I say it's not a call, it's not 200 calls, it's 200 um, conversations, sharing the sizzle opportunity. doesn't matter whether if it's by phone, over coffee, in person, at events, webinars online, doesn't matter conversations that you're having with people and some people said to me 200 are you serious I've never recruited 20 people that sounds impossible it's not 200 divided over 50 weeks let's take two weeks off we already missed one it's only four per week can you have four conversations four connections in a week it's not overwhelming I always say it's more about being consistently consistent than trying to call 100 people in a week. Some people can do that. I just could never keep that pace. For me personally, I break it down how many weeks, how many months, how many people do I have to talk to. So ask yourself with pure clarity, pure focus, pure intention, if you really want to see Sizzle grow and do what we need to do, 20 and 20, an elite club, we can all be part of it. There's some great things coming in there and didn't share because they don't have it all fine-tuned. I don't even know. It's kind of like a mystery, but I always love mysteries. But I super love a challenge. But imagine, imagine if you personally recruited 20 and only one person on your team did 20. That's 40 new people. That is huge. So, Aaron, I'm super excited. And something I learned a long, long time ago, and I've always done it, is you're only, you know, you're only in competition with yourself, but the one who shares the sizzle opportunity the most wins. So you win. Everybody wins on this call. Everybody. We're not in competition with each other. We're all in the same place, but the one who shows and shares the sizzle opportunity the most wins. 
So if you focus this year, focus 2020, absolutely without a doubt, listening to everybody, all the keywords, intention, act, action, focus, discipline, desire, go after it, want it, it all starts with you. Back to you, Aaron. Well, Laura, thank you so much, and you're absolutely correct. We have so many things happening right now. It gives you give people a lot of venues, a lot of different avenues to go down. We just have to identify which ones are the right ones for us to go down. And once you start to identify those, and then like I love the, the word clarity, it's, it's that clear, specific vision that you've created that, al- that allows you to go out and do the things that you know you need to do in order to take that next step and to, in order to achieve that great success that you're looking for. And so when we think about that, we've got a lot of wonderful things that are happening. Folks, you've heard it all tonight. And again, I know we always go long on the first call of the year because it is a goal-setting call. We have a lot of great people that come on this call. I could have, I could have literally called on about 100 more uh, because we've got so many great people out there. And I know that some of you that are listening right now, I would have loved to have had you on the call but we have only a, a limited amount of time and, and uh, some big events that are coming up. And so I wanted to throw those people into the mix uh, that are out there working, building, growing, and, and organizing events right now. Folks, we've got the app. The app is where you're going to find all kinds of information and give you all the tools you need to go out and build your business. And I know some of you may not use technology. That's fantastic and fine. You're doing a great job without it. And there are other people that need technology or that want to use technology. Find that app, the Sizzle app and go out and use it and, and start building with it. You know, we've seen a huge adoption increase now that we've started explaining it. Ben Cook's done a phenomenal job. He works for Jason, and uh, he's been doing these app hors d'oeuvres, and, and everybody's just eating them up, uh, no pun intended. But the fact is that we're seeing a lot of success as a result of people using that app to go through, uh, identify contacts. You can merge them in. You can send out videos. You can send out uh, PDFs and, and uh uh, you know, different brochures and catalog, et cetera, and it allows you to then go through a contact relationship management program that allows you to start to work on your follow-through. So when you think about that, it's going to be great. And then, of course, we've got so many other ways, so many other avenues, as Laura talked about, that will give you guys that capability to go out and do what needs to be done. It's just a matter of going out and doing it, putting your, fo- your best foot forward and starting to work towards that. Each one, reach one. Folks, take a couple of these notes with you. Each one, reach one. This 2020 event uh, or 2020 year itself is going to be phenomenal. But each one, reach one is just talking to somebody. And when Laura said, boy, that sounds monumental to some people, well, I can tell you this. It doesn't sound monumental to Laura. It doesn't sound monumental to Doc. It doesn't sound monumental to Ray or to Marianne or to Amanda, to DW, to whoever may be out there. It doesn't sound monumental. You want to know why? Because we come in contact with so many people a day. Uh, The average person comes in contact with between 8 and 10 people a day that all you have to do is open up your mouth and have a discussion and sit back and listen, and really listen. And once you do that, you'll start to understand that you have the opportunity to to introduce people to this incredible company, to this this vision that you found in, uh, in the opportunity of a lifetime, if you will. So now you have the chance. Go out and start working with it. And we've got Mower Mountain coming up, as Jason talked about. Put it on your calendar. Put on your calendar the Sizzle Leadership Academy. We want to train you. We want to give you all the tools necessary. We want to arm you to go out and do the job that you're focused and excited about doing. So we want you to know that there's an opportunity there. All you have to do is go out and start working with it, start identifying those goals, make a goal to be at the event coming up, and it may be better Uh, as you start to look at the way that you can get to that event and the way that we actually put out some contest rules, it'll be fun. But the reason that we haven't quite put those out yet, by the way, just as a quick excuse, is that with the holidays and then with the change-up that we decided to do towards the end of the year and make it a little bit more like a a leadership summit, we wanted to give you guys the opportunity to come out. And if you can make it for the first day, which is that Thursday, which is a Mower Mountain Day up at Tom Senior's place, and we have all this fun that Jason talked about, then put that on your calendar. But if you can make it for the two-day event, then put that on your calendar. If you make them for the three, fantastic. If you can make it for the two, uh, that's great. If you can only make it for the one, wonderful. Come out and spend some time with us. Go to the gala. Enjoy the opportunity to get together, rub shoulders with others, ask them how they're doing, why they're doing it that way. And the last thing that I want to leave you with is that when Laura talked about it and a couple of others have talked about it tonight, I was talking to Japan earlier today. They have, of course, Tom Maurer Jr. coming over. He's going to spend some time 
uh, in Japan uh, through the 17th, uh, 17th through the 20th, hitting these three cities. We were explaining and talking about some of the, the campaigns that we're working on, and it was interesting because one of the things that popped into my mind was that one time I was on a train, and I was riding with Yamamoto, who's our uh, Japan number one. He's been around for a long time. He's a phenomenal guy. Really just I consider him to be a dear friend of mine. And uh, we were sitting on the train, and they don't talk a lot on the trains in Japan, so I'll leave this with you as a final note. We were sitting there riding along, and, and I kind of heard uh, Yamamoto-san just whispering a little bit and having a, a bit of conversation with somebody sitting next to him. So I looked down and looked at him, and, and he was just chatting away. And, and uh, so as we were going along, uh, Scott Murdoch, who's our Japan GM and, and president of Japan, uh, he leaned over and he said, you know, it's interesting. He said, every time I'm with Yamamoto, he is he is talking to people. He's opening up and having conversation. Now, folks, realize, this was when he was in his late 60s, when I first met him 11 years ago. And now he's in his uh, mid to late 70s. And here's a guy that at that time had 78 people personally sponsored on his front line, on his first level in his organization, 78 people, and he was doing, um, gosh, making a lot of money. I don't even want to talk about it on the call, but he was, he was making a lot of money, and it would have been very simple for him to sit back and enjoy and, and relax as an older person and just reap the rewards of all the time and effort and energy that he would put into his business, but you know what? He didn't. He never, ever did because he felt like his message was so important that he had to talk to everybody about it. So I want you to think about that as we hang up on this call tonight. And for those of you that are listening to the recording, stop this and write down your clear intentions that you have to go out and do something bigger this year than you did last year. As Doc Fizz, how did 2019 work out for you? As Doc Fizz said, how did 2018 work out for you? How about 17, 16, 15? What's going to be different about 2020 this year than what you did last year? Well, what you did last year won't even compete with what you're going to do this year if you sit down tonight and sketch out your thoughts, ideas, and plans as it relates to your clear, intentional goals that you've set. And folks, I want you to know we're going to have a 2020 unlike anything we have ever done in the past. We're going to have a year that is going to be monumental, but we can't do it without each one of you, and we look forward to doing it with each one of you. So everybody, have a great night. Have a great day for those of you who are in different parts of the world. And have a wonderful uh, week, month, and we'll talk to you on the first Monday of February. We look forward to talking to you then on what we call now the 2020 Focus Call. Good night. Good day, everybody. Music.